second-hand coat I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat I tell my daddy not to be depressed All I need for happiness is the best I want a dime and nothing else has appeared And when it comes to men, you know how I feel I want a real man Give me a real man, you know what I mean What I need. Okay, now this is gonna be great. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> like we've never done it before. I think you should oh, be my name first. So it's you, right? Yeah, it's it's me. you first. Okay. Too bad. Hey, welcome to Real Men. I'm your host, Tim Steves. We've assembled a group of all-star yakkers to get down to what's really wrong with men. Let's meet them right now. Tim Riker dropped in. How you doing, Timmy? Got a pocket full of opinions, Tim. Good. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that, Alanis. Also, Lori Elliott is here. Good to see you, Lori. Good to see you. Thanks. Settle down, Lori. And Steve Brinder's in the house. I can't wait to start the show. Hurry, Tim. Uh, who dressed you, dude? Also, Noam Rosen is here. Hello. Good to see you, Nomer. Nice to see you, That's dude. actually how we're going to get it started. We're going to throw it over to Noam Rosen for a commentary to kick off this segment. Go ahead, Noam. Do nice guys finish last? Do they actually finish last? Now, I don't believe that's true. Now, it may be true that nice guys don't get as much sex as guys who aren't maybe so nice, but niceness is something totally separate. I mean, uh, some people who are just these young, rich people think that you just have to be not nice to succeed, and, and that's completely not true. These, these nouveau dumb people just think that by pretending that you're not nice, that that will actually make you successful, and it's not true. Nice guys do finish last. I'm a nice guy. I'm doing great, let me tell you. And Frank Frankly, anybody who says nice guys don't finish last, uh, nice guys finish last are, are just uh, hippie communists. Back to you, Tim. Okay, Noam. So, Noam, you, you indeed are finishing last? No, no, I, I finished okay, actually. What did you say? Nouveau dumb? Nouveau dumb, yeah. What the hell is nouveau, nouveau dumb? The nouveau dumb are the people who think that you just have to not be nice in order to be successful. Let's go to Steve to get this baby. Steve, you got the pink shirt on. Yeah, because I'm obviously a sweet pants. Yeah, I'm a real man. Yeah, I have no trouble with my sexuality, and I look good in pink. Do you agree with what Noam said? In, in some ways. I think if you're young, you're, you know, you're always told to be nice. Always told to be nice, and then when things don't go your way, you figure, I'm too nice. It's the nice people that go to the psychiatrist. The jerks don't go to the psychiatrist. The nice people, because they go and they want to go, am I doing the right thing? If I'm being nice, then why aren't I happy all the time? Mm -hmm. You know, and that kind of thing. And it, plays, it could play against you. Um, when I got older, it pays off because I met, you know, my wife, and one of the reasons she's with me is because I'm nice. Right. So at the end, it does work out. Do you like a nice guy, Laura? I or is sure it, do. Is it, is it too like too much? You're gonna get a toothache at some point? No, no. I love nice guys, and I went through that whole date the date the jerks thing and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and I regret it to this day. There's not like a time doesn't go by where I don't think back on my past and go. Why? Why? And one thing I don't understand about, you know, I, th I think guys resent the fact, you know, that, that women aren't attracted, as attracted to nice guys when they're younger, especially. But they should, they should appreciate it because once you, if, you're, if you're a badass and stuff like that and then you do end up, you know, getting laid a lot and mm -hmm. stuff, a lot of time you end up going, like, two days after you've scored this woman, mm -hmm. you're just like, ugh, ugh. You know, you're, you're not as appreciative of them because there's not much to appreciate. Do you, have to, do you have to get burned a few times before you appreciate the nice guy? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you do. You have to learn a lesson. And, Good. And it's re yeah, it is. Yeah, I it mean, let's good. hear from Riker, because you want to talk about a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Riker, he's married, he's loyal to his wife, he's 6'2", with all the skateboard hair. And yeah. But you know what, it's, it's uh, and because I've been married, I'm not only married now, but uh, I've also uh, been the kind of guy who's always been in a relationship. So I get the girls talking to me, complaining to me, you're the other nice guy, why can't I find a nice guy like you? All these guys are jerks that I date, I always end up dating jerks. And the same girls, I could give you a list a mile long, the same girls that complain to me about them, and I just want to find a nice guy like you, and two weeks later I see them dating the bad boy that I know, and I know he's a bad boy, and I know he's cheating on them, and I know he's, you know, and they're, they're yeah. Yeah, and, Cause when I was, and you just go, ah, I can't Well, help they're you. attracted to something different than what they want. Yeah. Is yeah, it, so that's totally. the problem. Is it an age thing? So it does pay off at the end because if you're with someone for a long relationship, when your body falls apart, you still can say, I really like this person. For sure. This is, what, this is what's going to last your relationship. Well, it better have, yeah. yeah, it better go yeah. beyond the physical, man, because yeah. eventually the, neither of you are going to be very attractive. Yeah, it's the hair and the 
the turtle. Because I hated that. I remember when I was a kid, and women go, I like you, you're really nice, and then they go out with the jock. And I just said, someone's lying to me here. Someone is really lying to me well, here. Well, no, that, no, it's not yeah, lying at all. Yeah. It's just maybe she was more attracted to the jock. Maybe just because yeah. he was more muscular or had a perfect abdomen or something. And when yeah. you're you know young, I mean? you're evolving, you know? You're yeah. still, like, you know, the first thing you, you you're more of a, aesthetically pleased than you are intellectually when you're younger. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you start, you know, refining your taste and figuring out, you know, what is my priority when it but comes is it to a looking for a man? But is it a defense mechanism, too? You don't let go, you kind of be cool and standoffish because you don't want to let go, you don't open yourself up. You don't want to be, like, like you know, sensitive because you're, you're taking a chance. Well, Lori was telling me just before the show, she was saying that uh, she goes, because I was saying, you know, I'm the nice guy, blah, blah, blah. And she said, I don't think of you as a nice guy. She said, I think you're a bit of both. I think you're a bit nice guy, and I think you yeah. got an edge, too. Yeah. And I thought back, and I thought, geez, I've always thought of myself as just a nice guy. And then I remembered, you know what? I think I developed that edge to get girls. I had to. It was a, it was a thing of, I, I'm too nice. I keep seeing the bad guys. get. So I developed <laughs> a bit of an edge and became a little more bold and Well, maybe -like. that's the formula, then. Let's, talk, let's hear from Gnome, because Gnome, you're a little... You know, sweet guy, aren't you? And yeah, did, did nice women guy. go for it, or did you find that you had to have an extra flavor there, like Tim's saying? Did you have to develop a little taste of bad guy as well? Uh, no, I've never tasted at all like bad guy. <laughs> um, I think that. Uh, well, you should try. It. I don't know because I, you know I, I'm probably not normal, so that's also I'm a bad person to talk because I, I've never really used to pursue that much. So I always was kind of friends already with girls that I ended up dating. That's just me, though. I think that has a lot to do with the, the, the idea seconds. of why women always end up with bad boys is because maybe they're, they, they're the ones that pursue, yeah. and the nice guys don't pursue as hard as the bad mm -hmm. boys. For the nice sure. guys are sitting back on, maybe if the bad guy doesn't get any, then I'll move in. But They're waiting for her to get dumped. And maybe the girls have okay. a self-destruct mechanism. That's mechanism. all the time we have for the segment, so, <laughs> you know, I don't know if we figured anything out, but we're coming back after the break. We're going to talk about alternative lifestyles. We're going to be joined by Enza Supermodel, right. who's definitely Yay. leading an alternative life. Hey, welcome back to Real Men. This segment, we're joined by a very special guest, Enza Supermodel. Hi. Hi, thanks for coming in. It's a pleasure being here. And I think you're going to be able to uniquely talk on our topic today, alternative lifestyles, and specifically dudes who like to wear women's lingerie. And Timmy Reichert's going to get us kicked off. I'm going to introduce that right now, and it'll sound something like this. Oh, Tim? Hey, man, whatever gets your rocks off, you know? Whatever turns you on, baby. Whatever turns your crank, you know? Say la vie. Live and let live. It's all good, baby. It's all good. These are the terms we've come up with to describe that all-important aspect of our society which says, what the hell do I care what anyone else wants to do with their life and their spare time so long as it does not interfere with my enjoyment of life, my own little pursuit of happiness. Today we're talking about men who like to wear women's lingerie, women's underwears, panties instead of briefs. And contrary to popular belief, these men come from all walks of life. They do it for all many reasons. We have Enza Supermodel here today. Enza, Enza likes to wear women's lingerie because Enza feels like a woman. She was trapped in a man's body at birth. And so she wears lingerie so she can feel on the outside like she feels on the inside. Then you go all the way over to the other opposite end of the spectrum and we have he-man tough guy actor Billy Bob Thornton. Billy Bob likes to put on the women's underwear as, as well, but that's because he's married to Angelina Jolie, and it reminds him of his sexy, sexy wife. I've never thought of putting on women's underwear myself. I've never planned on it, but then I'm not married to Angelina Jolie. C'est la vie is what I say. I hope we're going to talk about why people do this today and not should people or shouldn't they, because there's no question on that regard. The only question I have is, uh, are you against this? And then question two is, are you daft? Tim? Daft. I don't know what that meant. Daft. I had to end with a quick word. Yeah, well, for sure, man. Uh, <laughs> what, what about it, Enza? Is well, it all good? Well, listen, you know, guys that wear women's underwear are sick because they should wear everything. Panties, bra, pantyhose, the whole work. Just the you underwear. Know? What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. They shouldn't just do the underwear. So you got to do the whole thing. You, you know? need you're a gonna... smart skirt to exactly. go with that. Exactly. Sure. You're going to do yeah. one. You're going to got to do the whole thing. You no can't just measures. stop. Oh, yeah, but it looks so uncomfortable. You know? <laughs> look at you. You're like, you look like you're packed in there. You've got your ah. nylons on. You ever see a woman put on oh. nylons? It looks like just, just it, horrible. Thing. And then you got, you got the bra. Oh. And the heels. But Look at the heels. But you feel pretty. Oh, you feel, feel pretty. Tight. You can't walk in those. Oh, yeah. I got dressed he up in drag have... ones. But, you know, for oh, guys. Enza's great for on For guys. Heels. She can walk in yeah, awesome. Most guys. Heels, most guys. Sure. I did, I did a, a show where I had to get dressed up Enza's in. Enza's not an average guy. Yeah. No. But... Oh, you're so good. <laughs> <laughs> He's super guy. And you're not, not finishing last? No. 
But I don't know how anybody can walk in heels. It's so. It's, if, if you want to, that's great. But I just find it so. Okay, I will. Manza, are you <laughs> packed in there? Like how? How? What's the procedure? I'm tucked. It's oh, pulled yeah. back, and oh, you know the. Back. I can feel the tension here. I'm sitting and, here and with the, her. And the, and the little testicles are pulled up. So the little test. Come on now, you're a pretty big They're dude. I, I got a feeling the tuck technique is going to be pretty scientific, no? Well, you can't get excited. If it gets excited, it blows the whole thing. You know? Yeah. So if I were to, if I were to touch your leg, Enzo. Oh, that feels good. Are you in trouble now? <laughs> Are you in pain? Enzo? That will definitely mess up the fit of the hosiery. Let's try later. <laughs> Jim's bad guy. That'll blow the there fruit goes. basket. The whole Man. fruit basket. Will be I'm only comfortable doing that while it's all taped down, by the oh, way. I'm yeah. not going to do it later. And do, fruit basket. do some guys wear underwear because it's like a mild form of masturbation, too? Like instead of feeling the underwear, you're actually wearing it? I sure. think, yeah, it's it's a kink thing, yeah. too, yeah. you know? Like, uh, God forbid, you know, what happens if you get caught, like, in an emergency? That's exactly you know? what I was saying. Like, what, what if you're what in an accident happen, and right? you're supposed to always wear clean underwear? Yeah, and you're in like, I got a women's. full explanation, but, you know, if a guy gets caught in, a, in an accident, you know, and they, and they strip him down, they find women's underwear, you know, how do you explain that, well, right? Who cares? He's probably but more concerned about accident. the blood transfusion. <laughs> get me the blood! Yeah. Stop yeah. making fun of me, just get me the blood! <laughs> yeah, but if you're slipping into a coma, I don't think your jockeys... <laughs> yeah. Think of your family yeah. Don't tell my that wife! Happens. Yeah. Whatever, Amazing. just cut them off! But, you know, it's more of a kink thing. Like, I know there's some guys that I've talked to, and, uh, you know, uh, anonymously, and, and they have these fantasies about wearing women's pantyhose and things like that. Like, they've never tried it, right? Are they you know gay? Are they no, gay? they're straight. Okay, they're totally they're straight. They're straight with girlfriends or wives, right? But they've they always fantasized about getting into it. And, and you know what it is? It's the eroticism, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't want to cross-dress or anything like that, but they want to... It's the Billy yeah. Thornton thing, right? Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. So things on, and he immediately he's thinks of his so crazy. Really. Well, he's crazy, yeah. and she's yeah. crazy. But yeah. now, uh, but this isn't just about that, though. Like, it's it's also like... It's like... You know, a lot of people like the just the plain feeling. The feeling, That yeah. you get a little tingly. Yeah. yeah. But me, I, I don't wear women's underwear. I don't wear women's lingerie, anything like that. And frankly, I don't even care if a woman wears women's lingerie or women's underwear. Right. You know, it's just, it doesn't do anything for me at all. But I can appreciate that you can fantasize about just about anything. Exactly. And I know I do. Yeah. But yeah. it, it, so, it amazes me because it is. Like I said, I did a TV show. I had to get dressed up in drag once. It was really uncomfortable. Like it, nylons and heels. And it I said, is. who wants to do this? Yeah, it is. Like, if you don't do it on a regular basis, uh -huh. it is very uncomfortable wearing the cinch yeah. belt, the tucking. Like, the tucking took me a whole year to get used to, you know? Like, just for today's show? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Just for today's show? Well, no, but. Uh, a, I bet a the tucking would take a little getting used to, exactly. for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it would hurt every time I pull yeah. it in, right? Yeah. But after a while, they just slip in there without any problems, you know. And it's, but you know, for you guys, yeah. it would be very difficult, right? Mm -hmm. And um, but it, it just got, it's gotten to a point where it's very natural for me. So like, you know, it's funny when I'm shopping and I'm looking at at girdles or bras or uh, pantyhose. You know, <laughs> women give me these weird looks. You know, it's and like you're buying something and they'll give you. Oh, you're a freak, you know, sort of thing. You right? dress like this when you're buying. Well, uh, yes, I dress like this. But you don't then... wear like tin foil on your head at the same time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but there are days where you know you can't get dressed and go shopping, and, and you happen to need something right away. Mm. So I'll go as a guy and just mm. and just buy it, right? Um, Do they think you're shopping for someone else? They think that they think that, right? They'll, they'll say, "Well, what size is she?" Right? And I'll say, "Well," um, and then I try to <laughs> measure my myself size. right there. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I went to go buy some white sto uh, white stockings, mm -hmm. and um, I went like this, and uh, it was for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And the woman goes, uh, "Oh." These are tall. These would be good for you. And I said, well, thank you. And then just walked out. So oh, I love great. it. That's I awesome. love yeah. that. And money Things talks. Exactly. Cool. You know? It's like and a pretty woman. You oh, walk in there yeah. with the charge card. you got to uh -huh. get the service, right? But you know what, too, is um, what I find really interesting is when you're shopping, right, and, and I'm going through the, the pantyhose or the panty section, and these straight guys with their wives are looking, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, like, they'll go with their wives, but you could sort of see... Wow, she's touching that and everything. I wonder how it feels. And I'm sure some of those guys that are with their wives, they are they want to touch. That's what you fantasize you know? about? Yeah. Well, that's what they they <laughs> yeah, fast. They want to touch. They want to know what they're feeling, right? And when I was a kid, I was always embarrassed going into the lingerie area where the women are because they're like, I don't belong here. Exactly. Wrap but, it up. Yeah. 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 but that stuff looks good. Yeah. <laughs> we got to wrap this segment up. Thanks so much for coming in, oh, Enza, and adding your unique insight to the topic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, guys, you guys at home, go out, get some there. lingerie, put it on, feel great. I, like, this is all right. It's working for me. We're coming back. We're going to talk about problem gambling, and uh, we hit the streets. Here's Joe Q. Public. You guys ever gamble on sports? Oh, yeah. Thanks.
Many times, many times. How do you do? You put it on, online or you go pro line? Pro line, we uh, with friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got your bookies and that. Oh yeah, you got a man. You got the guy to go to. No, I don't. But uh, you have a friend that knows. Uh, Connection. You know what I'm saying? Hey, welcome back to Real Men. In this segment, we're going to talk about uh, problem gambling. And I happen to know our man Gnome over here. He he had a little problem with the gambling, didn't you know? Yeah, you know, a little problem. Not not really a huge one. I didn't, you know, hit bottom, as they say. How but, did that, can you describe? Uh, you know, there was all sorts of uh, charity casinos around town. Me and a friend, we used to go and play and lose money, go to Vegas, play. How much, how much would you drop on a bad night? Oh, you know, a few hundred bucks, but uh, that's a lot to a guy my age. Well, if you've only got a few hundred bucks, that's what a problem gambler or is, Or if you uh, borrowed it or stole it or, right. uh, you know, embezzled it, which Have is you, usually the case. Uh, <laughs> no, not me. No, no, no. You never, at any time, did you ever, were you ever down to that, that level where you were, like, getting money wherever you could just to get it into play? Well, I think a classic problem gambler line is I've got lots of money, just not any on me. So then <laughs> I didn't actually get to the point where I was, like, borrowing off people to, to gamble, but I certainly used to gamble quite a bit and and definitely had some problems. I got a hundred bucks says Gnome will be back in it in no time. I'm giving ten to one odds. I'll take that back. <laughs> hundred on Gnome wins your grand. I'll take that. No. Gambling amazes me because it is so addictive. Like mm -hmm. it's just like a drug because mm -hmm. once you, I went to Vegas and the first time I ever went, I spent all of my money. <laughs> now, and I almost broke up with my boyfriend. Just, is it because you think you're going to Did you spend the, the nest egg? One? Like, I the spent nest my egg. nest egg. I'm sorry. Wow. I just said it wasn't because every time you bet, the next one was going to be the one, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, and mine was on slot machines. Yeah, I was yeah. like in the middle of the night, like imagining myself rolling the toilet paper. Now, Lori, just going, come on now. Lori, I hate to hear the <laughs> slot machine thing because they I played blackjack program too. the machines. Lori, what do you think they program them to do? Pay out all day? Come on now. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. I thought that that machine that I named Slotty <laughs> was my machine, and it was on my side. You had a rapport with that machine. I did. I, Slotty took my last nickel. I was possessed with Slotty. Mm -hmm. Like, I had to go play like the, the Twilight Zone. Do you like slots? Do you like slots? Lori, once you left Vegas, did you did continue, or did you pretty much leave it behind there? You know what? I couldn't continue, because mm -hmm. I didn't have any money left. And I thought to myself, the next time I go, I will not do that again, and I haven't been back since even to test myself. Because the odds well, time to start table dancing. <laughs> <laughs> because the odds are against you, really. When you think about what what is Hugely. it? Twenty percent is the highest you can get with that shot. But that's what they're addicted to. I read this, and this is the most interesting yeah. thing about gambling addiction. And I didn't know this. This freaked me out when I read it. Mm. Is that they're actually addicted to losing, not to winning. You wouldn't right. think so. Really? They're not addicted to the high of winning. They're addicted to the high of losing all that bloody money. Well, so sort there, of to me. It's I sort, never it's sort, would have no. It's sort of like that. They, they're addicted to the play, the action. action. It's not winning yeah. the money or losing the money. It's that you have the yeah. money in play. The money becomes why? secondary. Why you just is care that, about though? the action. What, why yeah. do you need the action? Are you bored? Because it's it's, a, is, there, is there a self-destruct mechanism? If well, you Steve, know it would be like the it? same adrenaline rush that any of us would get from whatever our vice might be. The money in play gives yeah. you a kick that you can't but, get anywhere else. But it's a but it's not the, the They cost. say it's not the excitement of potentially winning mm -hmm. that is actually the, the thing that's driving them inside unconsciously. It's the excitement of possibly losing everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And money you can't yeah. afford to lose. That's the high they get. That's the fear factor. Yeah. The adrenaline rush. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's it harder. A, it's, you know what it is? A lot of the times it's just sort of a it's, it's wanting to get away from reality so badly mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this is one of the only things that you can do to distract you enough to not be thinking about your real life, which sometimes is miserable. Well, let's talk about the VLTs for a minute. We got a rail on those, those evil oh, tax on the poor. So Come on, that's yeah. Most disgusting. Well, my favorite take yeah. on the VLTs is that oh, they're not addicted. There's just casual VLT. Yeah, Bull. right. You go in yeah. there and they've got a, the mound of cigarettes beside mm -hmm. them, and it's always a pitiful yeah. sad they're scene. They're promoting it. The government's promoting because it's an easy cash cow. Not only that, but they, we're, like but Tim we're says, creating. they prey on the but, unemployed. You know how change that. machines check your dollar bill and they spit out change? Yeah. I think the VLTs now, they should just make them just take your welfare check right in and yeah. then just get yeah. credits yeah. right yeah. off your welfare yeah. check. Credits yeah. right into the VLT. 80 credits. Yeah. Funny. We got about 15 seconds and yeah. I think we can all agree that the VLTs are a, a blight on the yeah. Canadian oh, society. We don't need them. And there should be more help for addictive gamblers. More help. And casino should help them. We're going to come back after this break and we got a couple of more minutes on real men, so stay with us. Mm -hmm. That's it is. Mine. It is. And the government.
Hey, welcome back to Real Men. The key to hosting a show on television, wide stance. You see that? Anyway, we're talking about VLTs. We were talking about VLTs, and half the crew was like, what the hell are you talking about? Video lottery terminals, just to bring everybody up to speed. And right. uh, Tim Riker was making a nice point during the break. Why don't you pick that up, Timmy? Yeah, I mean, it's about the government involvement, because I'm not... Uh, as against the VL, as much as I hate the VLTs, I'm a libertarian, and I'm. If it was a private industry thing, I would, I couldn't possibly come down on let's get rid of them. Mm -hmm. But the government's involvement in it makes it sick. It's obviously just a tax on the poor, and it, it's, it, it's disgusting. Well, the only it's thing really the government, the casino, should get involved and put some of the profits they make into uh, rehab for Absolutely. these guys. For sure. you know? it's, it's it's the there's there's got to be some responsibility. And, and yeah, addiction. come on, though. You, you go to the video lottery terminal and they have the 1-800 number down right. there in tiny yeah. print. Like, give yeah. me a break. That's you know, thing, too. You know, there's a lot of slush funds in these uh, casinos, too. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, they're supposed to have a certain amount that goes back into charity and, and it all goes back into the tax fund and stuff yeah. like that. But there's a lot of room for maneuvering in the accounting of these places. These people do very well. And it doesn't mm -hmm. all go to charity. The like mafia people think. is not stupid, man. They don't get into businesses where you don't make a ton of ridiculous amount of cash. Yeah. I'd never you know say that word. So the mafia, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Hey, hey, I don't know who Tim Riker's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Nor do I. Does I didn't that say even mafia. exist, even? Ah, come on. Now. Hey, Noam, do, do you develop a gambling problem, or is it, is it just love at first bite? You know what I mean? Like, where you just are you hooked immediately, or does it is something that acquired taste? What do you think? No, it's an acquired taste. There's a social component, and it's usually learned behavior. And the first time you win a grand. <laughs> yeah. exactly. you, win a grand. you lose a bunch of times when you yes. go gambling and you're not yeah. a do you think, is like that, Does that really cigarette. have anything to do with it, Noam, if you win or lose? Um, well, I mean, are we talking general or about me? You know what I mean? Well, what was your situation? Were you, did you get hooked more when you won big, or did that matter? Uh, you know, at a certain point, it's not about the winning or losing. It's just about the playing and, and right. you know. Get the action. We got, we, we're, we're out of time, unfortunately, yeah. on Real Men. Thanks to the panel. Great job, guys. And especially Lori Elliott, of course. She's Thank so you very sweet. much. Thank hey, you. thanks for tuning in. Join us next time on Real Men, where men get real. Why did I get this?